the bell icon to turn on notifications. I'm particularly excited by, by this session because there's a load of functions in here that I know are really awesome, uh, uh, but I haven't yet had the time to properly investigate how to use them. Um, so I'm certainly going to learn a lot here uh, and I look forward to uh, learning alongside you all this evening. Um, well, evening here, morning if uh, or lunchtime, if, depending on where you are in the world. Um, fab. Right. That's all I have to say. I'm going to hand over to the marvellous Deborah Ashby, who's going to show you just how dynamic these new array functions are. Thanks so much, Adam. I can't I can't help but laugh when you do these introductions. It's, it's so funny. I feel so good after these introductions. So thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar on dynamic arrays in Excel. I hope you're all good. It's a bit of a, a strange time still at the moment. So I hope everybody is doing OK wherever you're located in the world. I'm still unfortunately locked down in London. Who knows when this is going to end? But, you know, we shall struggle on. Um, as Adam mentioned, if you do have any questions about the logistics of this webinar, just pop them into the chat. If you've got any questions about the content that I go through, then I will try and answer those at the end for you. Now, um, we always have a lot of our lovely regulars on these webinars, but for anybody who is new, who is joining us, my name is Deborah Ashby and I'm a freelance IT trainer. Um, I basically specialize in the design, delivery and facilitation of Microsoft training and courses, both online and in the classroom. And as we've said, we're going to be covering something that's kind of exciting because it's new and anything that's new is always quite exciting. And that is these dynamic array functions that have been released in Excel. Now I'm saying that they're new. They're not really that new. They were released around the end of 2018. So they aren't super new, but as with all of these things, they tend to take a while to take hold. And it's only been sort of more recently that people have really been exploring exactly what these can do. So that is pretty much what we're going to do in the session today. We're going to go through all of them. There are eight of them. I'm just going to show you how they work. And you can think for yourself how you might want to utilize those in your daily work. Now, before we get going, um, and looking at these functions, I will kind of add a caveat to this because these functions are only available in Excel for Microsoft 365, formerly Office 365. So if you have Office 365 and you use Excel through that, then you should have these. I will say, though, if you um, are thinking to yourself, well, I'm using a slightly older version, I would say that this is probably still going to be useful to you because we're going to be going through a lot of tips and tricks when it comes to formulas and functions. And they will probably be available in other versions uh, as we move forward. So it's definitely worth you staying on the call, even if you don't have Microsoft 365. So with all that said, let's take our first look at what these eight functions are. So I've put them up on the screen here and we've got filter, rand array, sequence, unique, sort, sort by, my favorite, X lookup, and then X match. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through each of these and I'm going to show you just a demo of how they work. And as I said, you can think to yourself how you might use them in your daily work. Now, as I said, these are what we call dynamic arrays. And what I want to start out by doing is really just going through what an array function is or an array formula, not a dynamic array, just a basic array in case you don't know what that is. Because to understand dynamic arrays, you need to kind of understand what an array function is. So that's where we're going to start. So let's pull up our spreadsheet. And I think Adam dropped this into the chat. I think he did. Um, so if you want to download that file and follow along with me, then please feel free. Um, I did download it. It's in the chat, everybody. Sorry, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. It's uh, it, it is there. Just scroll up a little bit, and you can uh, you can follow along. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's take a look at just a basic array function, so you understand the concept behind them. So I have a very very basic little table here. I just have some fruit. I have the price per item, and then I have quantity sold. Let's say. 
So if I wanted to do some kind of calculation and work out my totals here, what I would probably do is I might add a total column on the end and then I would do a calculation. So I might do something like equal sum and then do C4 multiplied by D4. And that's going to give me my total. I would then copy this down. So now I have my totals for each of my line items. Then if I wanted to find out what the overall total was, I would do another sum calculation in here. And then I would add up all of these totals. And then I get to my answer, which is $129. So what I've had to do there is I've basically had to utilize two different functions to get the result I want. And this is the difference with array functions. You can basically perform multiple calculations all in one go. So let's take a look at how I would do this utilizing an array function. Remember, the answer I'm looking for is $129. So what I'm going to do is say equals sum. Now, instead of selecting individual cells to calculate, I'm going to use the array. An array, you can kind of think of it as another term for a range, okay? So what I can do is I can select the entire range just here, and I can then say multiplied by this range just here. And close my bracket. Now, the tricky thing with arrays is that in order to tell Excel that you want it to calculate this as an array formula, you need to press Control shift enter to get your answer. So what I've done there is I've done multiple calculations all in one go, control shift enter, it knows it's an array and it will calculate it accordingly. And you can tell if an array function has been used because if you look up in the formula bar, you can see that my formula has these curly brackets around the outside. So whenever you see that, that is an array calculation. We've used the ranges to perform our calculation as opposed to the individual cells. OK, so bear that in mind as we go through these dynamic arrays. So dynamic arrays are kind of similar. They work with multiple values at the same time in a formula. But the advantage of them is that you don't have to press control shift enter to do them. And also they will dynamically update. So if anything changes, then the arrays will update accordingly. And as I said, we're going to go through all eight of these new dynamic arrays. So let's start out with filter. Now, what we have here is we have a little table. And again, this is just a very small sample size of data. And we have some exam results for some students. So what I have here are the block that the students are located in, the student name, the exam they took, and then their pass mark. And what I essentially want to do is filter this information. So you can see in the middle here, I've got block East and exam English. I could choose to change these to other pieces of criteria. And what I want is to see my result over here on the right hand side. Now, this is a filter function. And as probably most of you are aware, we have a filter function which is available on the data ribbon. In the sort and filter group, you may be used to utilizing filters. So if I wanted to sort by this criteria in the middle here, so I wanted to see everybody in the East block taking the English exam, I could, one way I could do it is to apply filters to the top of these column headings. I could then say, okay, I want to filter or just see everybody in the East block. And I could then filter to select just English. And that's going to give me my results. So that is absolutely fine. I can get my results that way. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, why would I want to utilize a function or a formula to do exactly the same thing? Well, the thing is, now that we can essentially do that using a formula, it means that we can incorporate other functions into that formula to get it to do something else. And it also means that we can use that formula anywhere on this worksheet. When we filter using the button on the data ribbon, we have to filter in this place. We can't filter over somewhere else in the spreadsheet, but with a formula, we can. All right. So let's take a look at how the filter function works. I will say it's pretty much the same as filtering from that data ribbon. So let's do our first one here. I'm going to type in equals filter. Actually, before I do that, 
just a little note here. If you're wondering or if you're not sure if you have access to these new dynamic arrays, I would just encourage you to click somewhere in your Excel and just type in equals filter. If you can see it come up underneath and you can see all of the arguments, then that means you have access to those new commands. If you see nothing, then you don't at this stage. So you might just want to do a quick check to see if you have, if you have access to these options. All right back to what we were doing. So let's type in equals filter, open our bracket and take a look at the arguments we have. So the first argument here is the array, okay? Now my array in this case is gonna be where my results are gonna be found. So I'm gonna filter for the block East and the exam English. So my results are gonna be found somewhere in this block of data, B4 to E23, comma. It's now asking me, what do I want to include? So this is where I start to tell Excel the criteria I want to use to filter. And this has to go in brackets. So the first thing I'm looking for here is I want to filter on the block column. So I'm going to select my block array, B4 to B23. I then say equals, I'm looking for the east block in that array. That's my first piece of criteria. I then need to put in a multiplication sign and open my next array because I'm adding in a second piece of criteria. So we're basically going to do the same thing. I'm now looking for the exam English. So what's the array? So it's this one just here. And I, it's looking for equals whatever is in cell G7. Close the bracket. OK, I didn't have to have two pieces of criteria in here. If I was just wanted to filter by the block, I wouldn't need to put in this second array. Comma. I then need to tell Excel what to do if it doesn't find anything. So if nothing matches those two pieces of criteria that I've specified, I could say just do nothing by putting two quotes in there. Or I could make this a little bit more explanatory by saying something like no records, something like that. And close my bracket. Let's hit enter and see what it produces. And there we go. Now, I don't know if you remember to when we actually filtered using our filter button on the data tab, it was pretty much this exact same result. What will happen then is because these are dynamic, if this information changes, so if this changes to West, you can see it can't find any records for West and English. If I change this to French and hit enter, it still can't find any. Let me pick one that I know it has. Let me go. Let's do West and Maths. And there we get some more results. OK, and that filter command, you can utilize that anywhere on your spreadsheet. All right. So that is the first one. The cool thing is you can incorporate other functions into the formula to make it do different things and perform in different ways. So that is your first dynamic array filter. Let's move on to taking a look at our next one. Now, this one is called Rand Array. Now, I will say this type of thing is something I use all the time because the kind of thing that I do, I'm obviously I'm a trainer. I have to create my own data sources fairly often. So, for example, on this webinar, all of this data that I'm using here, this is stuff that I've created from scratch. And sometimes I have to create very, very large data sets and add in all kinds of numbers. If you can imagine, if I need a data set that has 10,000 rows and I want that data set to contain some product information and some sales figures, typing in 10,000 numbers is not good. It's very time consuming. And so I always like to have or utilize commands in Excel, which will randomly generate information for me. Now, again, you may not have too much of a use for this, but this can be very, very useful. So the next command, this rand array, will generate random numbers for you, OK, in whatever formation you want. So let me show you an example of what I used to do before rand array came on the scene. And this is another function that you might want to utilize. It's not a dynamic array, but this is basically what I used to do. 
So if I wanted to fill in some, if this was going to be a data source for a training session, and maybe I just wanted to fill in some quantities of sales for these apps. Instead of going in and typing in numbers in each of these cells, what I tended to, to do was use a command called rand between, which basically stands for random numbers between, and then you can specify the bottom number and the top number. So maybe I want my random list of numbers to be between 10 and 100. Close my bracket, hit enter, it generates a random number, which I can then copy all the way down. So that is really helpful if you just need to get some data into some cells, okay? So the rand array function, which is the new dynamic function, works in a similar way, but it's a little bit more, you can specify more options for rand array than you can with rand between. Now, one thing I will say, if you want to use either of these, rand between or rand array, one thing you might notice is that if I come over here and type something, can you see as I moved away, these numbers actually changed? Because this formula will update whenever you click away, do something else. So these numbers are constantly changing. Now, I find that quite annoying. So in general, what I would do would be control, alt, sorry, control shift down to select everything. I would copy, God, I'm, I'm so out of control with my mouse today, bear with me, <laughs> a control C to copy. And then I would just paste the values, see what I mean? Oh my goodness, paste the values over the top. Okay, so that now they're just numbers in a cell, the formula behind them isn't there, which means they're not going to change when I click away over the screen. You'll find that that happens when you utilize rand array or rand between. So that's just a little trick for you to do there. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how rand array is different to rand between. So if I type in equals rand array and open my bracket. You can see I have quite a few different options. So this is a little bit more complex than rand between. So it might be that I want to generate a uh, random list of numbers and I can specify how many rows and how many columns I want. So maybe I want a block of numbers that's five rows high, comma, seven columns across, comma, I can then specify the minimum and the maximum value for my random numbers. So again, let's just do 10 is my minimum, 100 is my maximum. And finally, I get to say if I want those numbers to be integers, which are whole numbers essentially, or decimals. So I'm going to say true because I want whole numbers. Hit enter and you'll see that's exactly what I get. So I have five rows, seven columns of random numbers between 10 and 100. Okay, so really good for generating. Again, what I would do here would be I would copy and paste these as values over the top if I wanted to do anything with these, such as formatting them, maybe I want to add currency symbols, things like that. As I said, they tend to update and refresh and the numbers change if you don't do that, okay? Let's do another one just so you can see the other option that you have in here, which is the decimal option. So rand array. This time, let's do uh, 10 rows. We will do eight columns. I'm going to say my minimum is 100. My maximum is 250. And I'm going to do decimals this time. So we have our false argument on the end. And there we go. Now I have decimals as opposed to those whole numbers. All right, so a couple of different options there. It's absolutely brilliant if you ever need to just get a whole load of random numbers into a spreadsheet. Okay, moving along, we have sequence is the next one. And you can see here, I don't currently have anything on this spreadsheet, but what the sequence function does, and it's along the similar lines, is that it will generate a list of numbers again, but these are sequential numbers. And this array can be one dimensional or two dimensional. And you can specify the start value and also the step value. OK, so let me show you what I mean by that. Let's type in equals. Sequence, open our bracket and see what our arguments are. So again, this is very similar. How many rows do we want for our numbers? Well, I'm going to say, let's say 10 rows, comma. 
I'm going to have 10 columns, comma. I can then specify my starting number. So I'm going to say one, comma. Now I can choose if I want to, how much I want to step up by. So maybe I want them to go up in steps of five. So let's put in five there and see what we get. And there we go. So you can see now I have my random numbers. It starts at one, but it goes up in five. All right. So that is the difference between rand array and the sequence command. You can specify exactly what it is that you want and what step you want it to go up in. Hopefully that all makes sense so far. Some of these, they're not particularly complicated, but they um, are very useful, I find anyway. Let's move along to the sort function. So again, I'm utilizing similar data here. We have our block, our students, our exams, and our marks. Now the sort function, again, this is one of those commands that we're probably all fairly familiar with using in Excel. If we jump up to our data ribbon again, we have our sort button in here, so we can sort ascending, we can sort descending, and we can also do things like custom sorts, where we can sort on multiple fields. So if I was using this method on this particular data set, I could choose to sort by the student and then by the exam, so on and so forth. And again, the sort function that's now available allows us to basically do the same thing, but in a formula as opposed to in a command that's located on a ribbon. So we have that flexibility of being able to combine it with other functions and also the flexibility of being able to put it in whichever workbook worksheet we want. So let's take a look at how it works. I'm going to type in equals sort, open bracket. So again, we are utilizing our array. Now I want to sort all of my data, so I'm going to select everything, B4 to E23, comma. I now need to add in my sort index. So this is the column that you want to sort by. So I've basically selected everything in this table. I now need to say, okay, sort this by whichever column I want. And as with most things in Excel, when we're talking about columns, Excel numbers them from left to right. So block is going to be column one, student column two, exam three, mark four. So in this case, I want to sort my list by the marks. So I'm going to say column four is what I want to sort by comma. I then get to choose if I want to sort in ascending or descending. And you can see there descending is minus one. So I'm going to add in minus one. Close my bracket, hit enter, and it gives me all of my results sorted by the mark in descending order. Okay. Let's just do that one more time so you can see it the other way around. So let's just do sort, open our bracket, we're selecting all of the data. I'm specifying the column that I want to sort by. So let's do something different this time. Let's sort by the student name. So this is going to be column two, comma. And I'm going to sort in ascending order this time. So I'm going to add one. Close the bracket, hit enter. And there we go. You can see Adam is there at the top of the list. Not because of his mark, I might add, just because his name begins with A. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Adam. All right, so that is how you utilize sort. Now, similarly, sort by is another new dynamic function. And this is kind of similar to the sort function, but it works in a very, very slightly different way. So let's do our example equals sort by, open bracket. So again, we're selecting our array. So this is going to be everything in this table, comma. Now, this is where the difference occurs between sort and sort by. So this time, instead of selecting a number of a column to sort by, I'm selecting the entire array. So for this, I'm going to sort by mark again, but I'm going to select the entire mark array comma. I then need to specify ascending or descending. So let's do uh, descending, close my bracket, hit enter, and there we go. 
All right, so slightly different in the way that it works. Hope that makes sense to everybody. As I said, these are very simple examples, but it's good for you to know how to use them, where they are, and how you might incorporate them into your daily work. Let's move across to the next one, which is the unique function. Now, unique is particularly good because, and again, this is something I find myself having to do fairly frequently. If you imagine, if you have quite a large data set, maybe you have company names, and maybe that company name repeats quite a lot throughout your data set. Sometimes you just might want to pull out a unique list of the companies. So if I have 10,000 rows of data and I've got 50 different companies in there, that company name is probably going to be repeated quite a lot throughout that data. So what I might want is just to produce a list of the 50 companies contained within that data. So for that type of stuff, the equivalent on the ribbons would be utilizing the advanced filter where you can pull out unique records. Now, instead of using advanced filter, we now have a much simpler way of doing this. We can utilize a function called unique, which again is one of these new dynamic array functions. So if I wanted to pull out a unique list of all of the exams, for example, so if you look in my little table, you can see that I essentially only have four different exams, English, maths, history, and French. They're just repeated over and over again in this data. So what I might say is unique, select the array, and that is pretty much all you need to do. Close the bracket, hit enter, and it's just gonna pull out that unique list. That is actually a lot quicker and easier than trying to do that utilizing the advanced filter. I could do the same again if I type in equals unique. Open bracket. This time, let's do it on. Uh, let's do it on the student names. Oh, actually, no, we don't have repeats there. Let's do it on the blocks. Close my bracket. Hit enter, and it gives me those blocks. All right. So really, really useful. Now, one thing also with this unique function is that you can utilize it on data that runs horizontally as well. So, so far in all of these functions, we've simply been dealing with data that runs vertically down the page. But if you have horizontal data that you want to create a unique list from, like this just here, again, a very simple example, but you can see here we have the word apples repeated twice. If I just wanted a unique list of these fruits, I can again utilize unique, open my bracket, and this time my array is the same thing just here, but if I do comma, I can add in an additional argument just here, and the argument I want is true to return unique columns. Close the bracket, hit enter, and now you can see it's just giving me that unique list of values, okay? So remember that two different ways you can use unique depending on whether it's vertical or horizontal data. Good stuff. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this is possibly my favorite out of all of them. And that won't surprise anybody who knows me because this is XLOOKUP and I love a VLOOKUP. I also love an index match. And if anybody has utilized those functions, um, you'll know, particularly with index match, I find a lot of people really struggle to get index match right, or they find it quite difficult to remember. XLOOKUP is going to be your best friend. It literally simplifies the whole process of doing an index match. Now, I'm going to show you a few things in this example, because out of all of these, I think this is probably the one that people are going to use the most, particularly if you do a lot of VLOOKUPs or index match. So I'm going to spend quite a bit of time focusing on this just so you understand how it all works. Now, we may have some people on the call today who have maybe never done an index match or a VLOOKUP even. So I am going to show you the process of doing an index match, but then I'm going to show you how much easier it is to do an XLOOKUP. So before we get started, let's take a look at the data that we're going to be analyzing. So what I have here is a list of uh, apps. Uh, these are apps that you might find on your mobile phone. I've divided them down into different categories. Then we have the app name, the type of app that it is, the revenue, and the profit for each of those apps. 
And then you'll see over on the right hand side, I have a little table here where I want to be able to select an app in here and have it pull back what category, what type, the profit and the revenue for whatever is selected in cell H4. Now, normally for this type of thing, I would do an index match. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to show you another little trick, which is a little data validation trick if you're not aware how to do it. What I want here is I want to have a drop down list so that I can easily select the app I want to analyze from a list as opposed to having to come in here each time and type it in. So I'm going to delete out Bejeweled from there and I'm going to set up a data validation drop down list. So I'm going to jump up to data, go across to data tools and I'm going to select data validation. Now here, this is very simple. If we go to the settings tab, what I want is I want a list and then I need to tell Excel what I want contained within that list. What is my source? So for this, I want the app. So I'm just going to select everything that I want to appear in that drop down list and click on OK. So now you see I have this little drop down arrow and I can go in and I can select whichever app it is that I want to analyze. So that's a lot more efficient as opposed to just having to type that in each time. Now, let's take a look at how we would do this utilizing an index match. So normally, if I wanted to pull back the category for whatever app I have in here, I would do index open brackets. Now, I'm going to explain this quite slowly for those of you that have never utilized index match before. You can see that the first thing that index asks us, asks us for is the array. Now, I'm looking for the category in this case, so I want to select the category array. So that's this column just here. Like so. Comma. It's now asking for row number. Now, to generate that row number, we utilize the match function. We want to type in our lookup value. So what is our lookup value? What are we essentially looking up in this table? Well, we're looking up whatever app is listed in cell H4, comma. Where are we looking for this app? Well, we're looking for the app in the apps list. So again, we need to type in our lookup array which is the apps list. Comma, our final argument, am I doing an exact match or less than or greater than? Well, I want it to exactly match the text that I have in cell H4. So I'm gonna say zero for exact match. Now, because I've got two open brackets or parentheses, I need to close off two as well. So I need two brackets on the end. Just to recap what we're doing there, I'm doing an index of the category array, and then I'm saying look for whatever's in cell H4 in the app array and basically tell me what category it's in. Hit enter and I get my answer. So if we just have a quick look, so where is Lightroom? Here it is. I can see that yes, that is in the category of photography. So my answer is correct. So that's how you would do an index match. And I could go through and I could carry on doing that for the rest of these. But if I double click just to look at that, that is quite a lot to remember. It's a reasonably lengthy uh, formula and one that I find people get confused with quite a lot. So I want to show you how much easier this is to do utilizing XLOOKUP. So let's do the next one using XLOOKUP equals XLOOKUP open bracket. We want our lookup value. So I'm looking up H4, comma, lookup array. So where am I looking this up? I'm looking it up in the app column, comma. What do I want it to return? Well, I'm looking for the type. So I just need to select the type array. That is it. Close bracket, hit enter, she says. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me one second. What have I done wrong? I think I've deleted that out. Let me just do that again. Sorry. Look up value H4 comma look up array is app. Now double checking everything as I do it. 
comma, what do I want returned, the type. So we're going to select that array like so. I don't think we have any other arguments. No, we don't. Close the bracket. And there we go. OK, so if you take a look at the two different formulas, so, so you can see these side by side. If we jump to the formulas ribbon and just do show formulas so you can see these. Look how much difference there is there. It's such a simple, simple formula. We haven't had to combine two different functions and it's just a lot easier to remember. Like a lot of the arguments are a lot more self-explanatory so you can really understand what it is that you're doing and the entire formula is shorter. So if you're somebody who uses index match a lot, I would start replacing that with XLOOKUP. Now, another way that I could do this to make this even quicker is I could name my ranges. So instead of selecting them all, I can use named ranges. So let's do that. Let's do it one more time so you can see it. But I'm, instead, I'm going to name these ranges. Now, in this one, I'm going to be using the app and the profit. So let's just name those ranges. So I'm going to click in the app column, control shift down to select everything in that column. I'm going to jump up to the formulas ribbon and I'm going to create a new named range and I'm going to use this option here, create from selection. I'm going to say use the top row as the name for my range, which is going to be app. Click on OK. And I'm going to do the same for profit. So control shift down to select the entire array. Up to create from selection, use the top row. So it's going to be called profit and click on OK. So when you use named ranges, this makes this process a lot easier as well. So let's do X lookup, open bracket. Lookup value is whatever is in H4, comma, lookup array. Now I don't have to go through and select everything. I can just use my named range, which is app. Comma, return array. I can just start to type it in and Excel should pick that up like so. Close my bracket, hit enter, and I get my result. So again, if we look at those formulas by clicking on show formulas, you can see it's getting shorter each time we're doing it. OK, hopefully that makes sense. And I hope that is a big one for people who utilize things like VLOOKUP and index match all the time. It is a bit of a game changer, I think. All right, let's move on to the final one. I think we're going to finish a little bit earlier than normal today, guys. Let's take a look at X match. Now, again, this is kind of along the similar lines. So X match is really the match function, but an updated version of the match function. And I have two little examples to show you here. Uh, the first one, I've just taken that data that we've been using to keep things consistent. And what I've got here again is the apps, and I just have the revenue listed out. Now, what XMatch will do, again, it's just very similar to Match, but slightly more powerful. You have slightly more, more arguments which you can add in. So, for example, in this little table just here, I have the app name Candy Crush. And again, if you wanted to, you could create some kind of drop down list to make this easy to select and change. And all I want to do is I want to find the position that Candy Crush appears in this list. Now, I've purposely done one that's near the top just to make this a bit easier. I can see that Candy Crush is the second app in my list. So the position that I'm looking for here, or the result, is position two. OK, that's what I'm aiming for. So let's say equals X match. Very simple, lookup value. My lookup value is F3, comma, lookup array. Well, I'm looking for Candy Crush in the list of apps. And again, you could utilize named ranges for this. But if I do comma, this is where it gets different from the match function. Because what I can do in here is I can specify which way I want Excel to search. Now, for this first example, I'm just going to do an exact match of zero. If I hit enter, it's going to give me that result that Candy Crush is in position two. Now, what if I have Candy Crush multiple times in this list? So let's just change Google Maps to Candy Crush down here. So maybe I have twice in this list. 
You can see here it's telling me that Candy Crush is in position two. Maybe I wanted to find out what position Candy Crush, this one down here, was in in this list. So how do I get X match to tell me what position this one is in? Well, that is where those additional X match arguments come into play. And this is what makes it different from match. You don't have this option when you're utilizing match. So this is kind of like a more advanced version of match. So let's do it again. But this time, let's find the position of the second Candy Crush. So I'm going to type in equals X match, open brackets, look up value as F3, comma. I'm looking up Candy Crush in my apps list. So let's do our selection like so, comma. Now this time, instead of doing an exact match, I'm going to do an exact match or next, sorry, I'm going to do an exact match here. But the next argument, I'm going to say search last to first. Okay, so first to last will go down the list, whereas last to first will go up the list. Okay, so if I do search last to first, which is this one just here, it's going to give me the position of 20 for the second Candy Crush. All right. So it's those additional options that you get on the end, which make it different from a regular match command or match function, I should say. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's move down and see this in a more workable example. So let's go down to this little table here and we're going to do another X match. Now, this X match is different because we're going to do both a horizontal and a vertical match. So you can see here I have a small table which has some sales reps in it. And we then have maybe the sales that each of those sales reps have generated for January, February and March. And what I want to do up here is be able to type in the sales rep name and the month and get their total in here. So essentially, we're doing a match, but we're having to match two pieces of criteria, one running horizontally and one that runs vertically. So for this, we can use a combination of index, but we can combine it with an X match. OK, so let's click in total and let's say equals index. First of all, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to index basically everything that I'm searching in. So I'm just looking for the totals here. So I only really need to select the totals as my array. Comma, I then need the row number. So I'm gonna do an X match here, open the bracket. And it's asking me for my lookup value. So the first thing that I'm looking up is I want to look up the sales rep in this sales rep list. So my lookup value is gonna be B40. I do a comma. My lookup array, well, where am I looking this up in? I'm looking it up in this array just here. Now, I want two pieces of criteria for this. So I'm going to need to close off my bracket. And then I'm going to do a second X match. Because what I also need to specify is the month. OK, so for this one, my lookup value is going to be the month C40 comma. And where am I searching for this? Well, this time I'm looking in a horizontal array. C42 to E42. Now, because I've got two open brackets in here, I need to close off both of those. Hit enter and it pulls back my answer. And if I have a look just to confirm that is correct, it all looks good. If I was to change the sales rep, so let's change it to Adam Lacey. Let's see how much how much work he's done this month. And there we go. If I change the month to January, I get a different result again. OK, so it's going to dynamically update even if my criteria changes. So that might seem like quite a long formula, but it is a lot shorter than if you were trying to do this using index and match as opposed to index and X match. OK, so those are the eight dynamic array functions in Excel. As I said, this webinar is slightly different to our normal ones where we follow through a process. These are all very kind of standalone commands. 
but I just wanted to introduce them to you, make sure you understand what they do. And I hope that as we've been going through this session, it's kind of triggered some ideas in your mind. As I said, personally, and you can type into the chat if I'm completely wrong on this, out of all of these new functions, to me, the biggest wow is the X lookup, particularly if you utilize VLOOKUP quite often. But that is pretty much all I wanted to show you. We have finished a little bit earlier, but that's that's all right. We've been through everything we need to. So I will hand back to Adam and he can funnel through any questions that we have. Thank you, Debs. That was uh, that was excellent as always. Um, and yeah, I, I concur with you on the, on the X match. I, I usually look up a lot and it frustrates me that you have to go from left to right. And, yes, uh, name the none of that now. That kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, Bala has just asked, what happens in X match if there are five duplicate values? Uh, well, that is a good question. Let's have a look. These are these are kind of fairly new for me as well as you guys. Let me just see, because it, if it's possible, I, if there's more than two, one, of the, so, yeah. one of the options on the end. So do, 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 do. search first, to last, search list, last to first. So yeah, if you want it to kind of search the one in the middle is what you're talking about. Sort in ascended order. I can't see anything in there which would suggest how to do that. That might be one I have to Google. As I said, I don't know. These are fairly new for me as well. So I don't know every single outcome, but that might be one for Google. Um, I can't see anything in these arguments um, that would suggest how to do that. Yeah, it's always a tricky one, isn't it, with um, with multiple um, duplicates in a list if you're using a lookup. Yes. Um, it's always, always tricky. But that the X match at least gives you two options rather than the previous sort of one. Um, and then a, uh, a message from Patty. Um, how do you get a total value of a column to transfer to a column on another sheet? Yep. So if we go back to, so if you're talking something like this. Yeah. So yeah, as in, is, is this what you're talking about? Just, just putting it, do you mean another sheet on the same workbook Patty or, um, or another workbook altogether? You just drop us a message. If you mean, um, yeah. So if you mean like linking, is that what you mean? Linking cells or. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah, exactly. It equals okay. and select the cell, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, if you just type in equals and then the cell, it will pull across whatever number is in that cell, essentially. So I've just done equals D5. So if you do equals and then click on your formula, your total cell, that should pull that through to this worksheet or another worksheet if you're working on something else. Yeah, so you can you can basically put equals and uh, and carry through. And you, you can do that with the workbooks as well. You create yeah. a link. Yeah, it's just you have to have both of the workbooks open and the right in thinking if you're using different workbooks um, yes yeah so you have to yeah so this is creating a link so if you type in equals and then just click on the cell you're basically linking to that cell so it's going to pull through that information so if you have a long and this is what i'm thinking that you're talking about if you have a long list of numbers and you have a total at the bottom and then you want to utilize that total on another worksheet all you need to do is jump onto the other worksheet type equals and then click on the cell where the total is and it will pull that through and the good thing about that is because it is a link if those totals change or that number changes it will update in the other worksheet as well so it's a more efficient way of working yeah big time um Fantastic. Any more questions, uh, guys? Do do drop them into the box. Something that I um, I thought was uh, was amazing was the unique function because I don't mm -hmm. know how many times a week I use the remove duplicates yes. um, function in the in the in the data toolbar. Yep. Um, and uh, having a function to do it instead, I think um, it is just yeah, well, quicker and easier because I end up. Uh, copying and pasting into another sheet, deduping, yep. bringing yep. them back over, mm -hmm. you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I, I think the great thing about all of these um, array formulas are, are just the time saving potential, but also to some of the um, functions that are only available via the ribbon before yes. actually yep. bring them into formulas mm -hmm. and allow you to do a lot more with them. So, yeah, I think um, it, it's been great to see some of the uh, some of how they work I, I almost feel like we need another session uh doing a like combining a load of them to uh yeah. to yeah. into like a dashboard or something like that to make yeah. it uh, just just to show how powerful they are because i think um i think these could these can unlock a lot of um a lot of kind of things that you, you'd otherwise be doing quite manually in excel 
Absolutely. And that's that's why they're good. You know, as you as you said, they are kind of you can do a lot of this with some of the, the buttons that you have on the ribbons. But having them in formula form just makes them a lot more flexible because you can utilize them in so many different things and you can combine other functions. You can, you know, combine, you know, sums and averages and ifs and you can include them all with a lot of these functions to, to get a different result as well. So it's really kind of how complicated and how far you want to go with it um yeah exactly so, brilliant cool well challenge for everyone then in the next couple of weeks or before <laughs> we meet again try and get a an array formula into one of your uh into one of your excel spreadsheets i, I know that i stick to the same stuff that i know i know all the time but i'm i'm determined i'm going to be using x lookup this week i think yeah um, if i uh if if the need arises um <laughs> for, for sure um great um we did have a couple of questions about recordings of course there's going to be a recording of this i'll send it out uh tomorrow probably via email um or host it on the on the blog as normal and i'll pop the uh follow along file as well so you can download it and uh follow along so i know i know we went through all these um things today but it's always good to uh to sort of uh to practice them and have a go for your for yourself as well um and then yeah just proof that this is definitely live uh, otherwise we'd have probably edited out the uh x lookup uh not working <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> we did have a question the other week actually are these actually live or are they they let you just top and tail them it's like no no they're, they're really live and there's there's your proof everybody um, we really like doing this i think i made a spelling mistake that was my problem i think i might have selected the wrong column I was looking at the wrong column when I did it the first time. So that, that's just me getting, I'm Easy tired done. today. What can I say? <laughs> Stop working so hard, Dad. I know, I know. <laughs> I cool. All right, everybody. Um, I think uh, if there's no more questions, we will wrap it up there. Um, I think next month we're doing PowerPoint, aren't we, Debs, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, I, you always so, ask me this. Are you sure that's on it? Yeah, no, we are. We are. We agreed it. We agreed it, definitely. <laughs> PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do a PowerPoint webinar. So I think we, we've not done a PowerPoint one in a little while. And there are there are so many things in PowerPoint now that are just, uh, you know, really cool and actually can make a massive difference if you're doing presentations, especially now if you're, you know, uh, like like many of us doing more stuff um, online and, and from home, um, being able to sort of uh, put together an effective presentation can uh, can can really help so we'll um we're going to yeah, do some we'll cool be... cool fancy stuff yeah exactly it's going to be good top, we're going to get away from stuff. the amateur looking presentations we're going to give you some skills to make them give them the wow factor shall we say that's it that's mm -hmm. it the uh the, the you had x luck up this week you're going to have powerpoint x factor next week that's right so um yeah it's uh not next week next month um that's um i think we're doing it slightly earlier because it's basically Thanksgiving, isn't it, towards the end of next month? So um, I think we're doing it the week before Thanksgiving so that um, people can uh, attend because obviously we normally do them on a Thursday and we, we wouldn't want to do it on the actual uh, <laughs> on Thanksgiving when people are trying to enjoy turkey, etc. cetera. Um, but we'll, um, cool, we'll see you all then. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And um, yeah, have a great rest of your day and great rest of your week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.